by the time someone has cancer, it started brewing 10 years ago. Say someone um, has no cancer diagnosis. Do you see people who are just wanting to get yearly scans or get ahead of it? Like you mentioned this 10 year mark. What, what's your thought on someone who has no symptoms or no signs or no diagnosis? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think that can early detection and prevention should be on everyone's mind. And not, the reason why I say that is that Cancer is one in two people. It's the number one killer from one to 85 years of age. In children, it's the number one killer. It was accidents, now it's cancer. Now we are seeing 18 year olds, 25 year olds, 30 year olds, 35 year olds, people, lots of people less than 40, especially in the last year, all right? And so I always tell people that our children are the canaries in the mine. When I say children, young children, and then young adults. So there, th this information is telling us we have got to stop, look, and listen. What is going on? And now we need to create an awareness that a 25-year-old needs to be living a life of prevention, not just for cancer, Morgan, but all diseases, because what we're seeing is just an alarming increase in infertility, low hormones in both male and females as young as, you know, 20, 25 years of age, okay? Cancer, the cancer cases I see for young people, I feel like it's surpassing older people. You know, we thought cancer was a disease of a 60 plus year old uh, because I always tell people, I used to tell people, yeah, you had a warranty until you're 40. <laughs> and then from 40 to 60, you were on a semi-warranty. And 60 on, it's just repair, upkeep, and maintenance, all right? Just like a 60-year-old car or 60-year-old boat. But the miracle of the human takes, requires uh, attention. And uh, so, but I can't say that anymore because what I've seen um, is, is that our young people today have a lot of chronic medical issues, okay? And the kind of people I'm seeing, they're not people who haven't taken care of themselves, okay? These are, we have amazing patients who like been passionate about health and eating and nutrition and movement. And, and they're, they're really aware people. I find the young people and they're so open and they wanna learn everything and know everything. So, um, so I, I, today we have to do this. So, you know, I, blood tests really don't tell you you have cancer. So, uh, but there are some markers on people's blood tests. I will tell you that some of the top markers are C-reactive protein, mm -hmm. a non-specific marker for inflammation, hemoglobin A1C, which is a reflection of your sugar over 90 days. It's also, it's a marker of what they call glycation. I call it wrinkles inside your body. And so you get, you create this protein misfolding and then vitamin D because vitamin D influences over 3000 genes and affects a pe person's development of cancer. And I would say that probably 95% of my patients who come in here have low vitamin D, even in California where I am, where yeah. there's sunshine, lots of sunshine. So it's really, cause we're not getting out, we're not getting outside and getting sunshine today, right? Because everybody's inside in artificial lights, you know, at a computer, et cetera, right? So we're not getting the vitamin D that we should. So those things, the another marker that I like to look at is DHEA sulfate. DHEA is the number one hormone by, made by your adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands sit on your kidneys like little hats and they make over a hundred hormones. DHEA is the primary one. That's your stress, immune and longevity hormone. So that also will tell me how well your body is handling stress. And um, it's amazing, even young people have uh, an issue with that. So those are indications. Now there is a wonderful blood test called the cancer profile. It's done by American Metabolic Laboratories. It's a fasting blood and urine, and that will check for quantitative HCG in your blood and in your urine. HCG is a malignancy marker. It will check for GGT, which is the most sensitive test for your liver. 
your liver, 50% of the population has fatty liver. So it's inundated with so much toxins. Um, it checks TSH, which is your thyroid. Your thyroid's the battery to your body. It checks DHEA sulfate. It also checks CEA, which is a non-specific marker for cancer. And then it checks a test called PHI, phosphohexohysomerase. That's an indication of low oxygen in the cells. So Warburg, a uh, hundred years ago, who got a Nobel Prize, who said that cancer is low oxygen, sugary, and acidity. And so that's a good marker to know what's going on with the body fundamentally at the cellular level. So I can order that test. And then there's another blood test I can order. I call it a liquid biopsy. It's called Oncotrace. Oncotrace was developed by a lab in, in Switzerland called RGCC. They've been around for about 22 years. I learned about them about 11, 12 years ago. And they will look for something called circulating tumor cells. Circulating tumor cells are responsible for 95% of metastasis. If cancer starts with one cell and one cell is allowed to duplicate, and when it gets to a size of one to two millimeters, which is about two pencil lines, it starts releasing circulating tumor cells. Circulating tumor cells don't respond to surgery or chemo or radiation. And that's what's responsible for 95% of metastasis. Only natural substances actually kill circulating tumor cells. So if someone has a positive liquid biopsy, then we know something's going on and then we've got to go take a deep dive to figure out where, what it is. If they're whatever age they are, what happened to you from in utero to where you are now? What are all the significant events? Like yesterday, I had a neuroendocrine tumor gentleman, 52 years of age, a software engineer gentleman, and he had neuroendocrine, which means it's it has to do with the hormones and nerves as opposed. So he had it in multiple organs. And it's interesting, he went to the doctor for abdominal bloating in January and just got diagnosed, you know, unfortunately, nine or 10 months later. And so that's why I always teach physicians, look, if someone is coming into you with, if they're not better within a month, you better just start taking a deep dive. You talked about body imaging. They have now whole body MRIs without dye. Okay. Before MRIs were all done with something called gadolinium, which is a metal, but they found it's found to be now very toxic. And so, yes, people can excrete toxins. But now because we're so overloaded with toxins, it's just one more layer of things that patients have to do. And of course, lots of people can have serious side effects from gadolinium. And then I always tell people it's the bioaccumulation of toxins, but a whole body MRI will look at your whole body from head to toe. And so that's been, um, that started before the pandemic. Uh, but, and then they kind of stalled a little bit, but it, now um, they're growing. So we have a couple of places here in California um, that you can get a whole body MRI. But I always tell patients, and I use the picture of an iceberg. It's not about what's on top of the iceberg. Everything is down below. So you can't look at the lump or bump. You have to look at what are the origins of everything. So everybody here gets a toxicity study, heavy metal thing, a gut evaluation, nutrient testing. I mean, it's, you know, extensive blood testing. You know, you've got, when you want to work up the miracle that you get to live in every day, it's not something you just kind of do a little thing. You've got to do a very, very, you know, amazing investigation of everything that is, you know, going on in your body. And I always tell people, you're not living in a Petri dish. Your Petri dish is the planet, all right? The world, right? Uh, the 8 billion people here and everything, everything, everybody's doing, all right? So if the pollution is bad in India or China or here, we're all mixing this air together. So, you know, toxicity, you know, I always tell people that it's not one toxin. We know what one toxin does. But put 
hundreds of toxins together, no one understands the synergistic potential danger of all these chemicals in your body and how you handle things and how I handle things are going to be different. So, so we, you know, every patient deserves to really know and understand. That's why, you know, these podcasts uh, that are being done all over and educating people and empowering people to really, really study the masterful miracle that we get to live in. And I think that's what, you know, hasn't been done, you know, they, they, I know my children, um, they took health six weeks of health in high school. Well, in high school, you know, you're not really paying attention that much. You're kind of yeah. like yeah. functionally getting through classes and <laughs> okay, let's do this, but I got to get into college and I got to do this and I got to do that. So, um, but you know, I always tell people we get a license to drive, but we need to really, really have communities of health. We need to have communities of of, of well-being and health where people go and can learn. That's why we're so big on education. We have cancer conversation every other week. We highlight topics. We go down, teach people about a topic. And these topics, some of our, some of our patients have taken our classes four different times. It's that much information. And then PubMed, there's 1.2 million PubMed articles written per year. So what we did last year is changing this year, correct? Because there's new information coming out all the time. And no one, no scientist, no doctor has the capability of delving down in maybe what article is important or not. I know I'm I. I'm always, you know, finding new stuff every single day, have to go research and study. Like on Sunday, I met with an ex a person who's an exercise a physiologist, but he treats stage four cancer patients. So I spent an hour on the phone going over just what he does and how important the, your muscle and bone fitness is to recovery in a cancer patient. So, and we now know this, that it's so important that we have the musculature, the bone density to, you know, so that the body can house what it needs to have and take care of itself. So we're just in amazing discovery times. We just need to get all this information out. We need to empower people to, you know, take ownership and responsibility, a pill for every ill we know doesn't work. And maybe you may need medicines. Okay. I know how to use medications. And I tell patients, I will do the medicines, but I'll do also, you know, all the other stuff. Okay. So um, you've got to, you know, you've really got to understand. We know in, in medicine, we learn biochemistry. So biochemistry is basically how the body works. So if that isn't working, then how's the patient going to get well, right? Yeah. For example, if you have high sugar, then how are you going to get rid of, you know, all these diseases because high sugar, pre-diabetes or diabetes weakens every single cell. So we've got to completely change that situation immediately. And that doesn't happen overnight, right? That takes minimum three, six months a year, depending on how bad you are. 